Hey everybody, it's Peter, and today we're going to take a look at the Pedego City Commuter, and we're going to compare that to the Pedego Interceptor. Both of these bikes are actually very similar, but there are some key differences that may make one better for you than the other. So here's how this works. I have full access to the Pedego line of bicycles from Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals and Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. So there's no way I'm going to answer every question that you want answered in this video, but I'll do my best to answer a whole bunch of questions. And if there's something that you still want to know, let me know in the comments below and I'll make future videos because I can continue to come back to these bicycles again and again to make sure that you get the answers you want. And hopefully we can build a little community here of places to get answers and places to chat about these pretty awesome bikes. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't done it, I'll wait. Go ahead, it's the button right there, and then we'll keep going. All right, so here's the thing that's interesting to me about these two bikes. They are quite similar. This one is the best-selling bike in the United States. This one, I've been told, is the best-selling bike from Pedego in Canada. So both those are from Pedego. So Canadians seem to prefer this. Americans seem to prefer this. Is there a reason why? I don't know. Now, first of all, I want to say that both of these are the low step models and you can get them in a high step model. A lot of people used to call these men's frames and women's frames. I don't think we do that anymore because frankly, low step is just convenient for a lot of people. So we're going to talk about a lot of the similarities, but also some of the key differences because there are some things that are going to suit you if you're a certain type of rider or a certain type of user. And we'll try to dig into that right now. So I'm going to start with the city commuter, maybe because I'm Canadian, maybe not. But this is, of course, an e-bike. Pedego bikes are e-bikes, so they're electric assist. So you're going to blend that electric motor with the battery pack. Well, sorry, the battery pack's over here with, of course, pedaling on your own. So it's kind of like a hybrid type system in a car. And again, they share the battery pack. So you're going to have this similar rack on both vehicles. You're going to have the battery pack in here. And they are available two different size battery packs. The reason you're going to want the larger battery is if you want more of that electric assist range. Sometimes people who buy two bikes that are identical if one person is significantly heavier than the other, then the lighter person can get away with a lighter or a smaller battery pack. And the heavier person takes the larger one just because you're going to need a little bit more range if you go out together. But generally speaking, uh, if you can spring for it, I usually recommend the larger pack, but it depends on your riding style. If you're only riding short trips, the smaller one will be fine. What I find is most people ride a lot farther on e-bikes than they would normally on the regular bike. So again, frame down here. I cannot tell you how many accessories you can get for these types of things. You can get basket style, you can get typical commuter type style stuff. You can get all kinds of things that fit on here from Pedego. So you've always got options to take things, but they do come with this old fashioned really uh, clamp right here, which can clamp on things. It's the same on both bikes. Same seat, they have suspension seat posts, same gearing. You have an eight speed transmission here. So eight speed gears, you have a single chain ring in the front with the covers on both bikes as well. Now the step through frame is what we're looking at today. You can get a high step frame or a low step frame. They used to call those men's and women's frames. I don't think that's accurate anymore. I think it's just more convenient. If you wanna have a lower step, you can have this on both bikes. This one has an adjustable handlebar here. We're gonna talk about that. That's one of the differences here. And both the bikes I have today are equipped with fenders. Now, one thing to keep in mind with fenders is some some fenders don't work with some bike racks. Some of them come out too far here and you can't get the clamp on the wheel when you have the, the bike racks that touch the wheels only. This one, the fender is nice and short up front here, which is where you don't need a whole lot of coverage. And that allows you to have most, um, most uh, bike racks that sort of fit on here when they grab the wheel and go down. So we'll show you a picture of what I'm talking about right here of how that bike rack can fit with these wheels and tires, including with the fenders. Over here on the top, you've got throttle, you've got a computer. We're gonna show you all that here, but those are a lot of the same things. Now let's take a look at some of the differences between these two. One of the key differences you're gonna notice between the two bikes, and it's hard to spot at first, but these are slightly wider tires. These are what they call balloon style tires. These are sort of traditional style tires. These are 2.15 inches wide. These are 2.35 inches wide. Not a whole lot of difference. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we used to think that narrower tires, especially in the 80s and 90s, narrow high pressure tires gave you less rolling resistance. What we're finding is that sometimes the balloon style tires on rougher surfaces can give you less rolling resistance, which there's a whole bunch of science behind that, but basically they absorb some of those bumps and overall on a bicycle, um, it's either your body or your tires that are absorbing the bumps. So there are some benefits to these. The other really cool thing is the names. These are Schwalbe tires. They are called Fat Frank. I would buy them for that reason alone. But one other thing is 
I think if you're riding a lot of rail trail, gravel, you know, like tight gravel, tight mix uh, stuff, these ones might have a slight, slight advantage over these ones. However, if you're doing a lot of city driving, pavement, that kind of thing, these ones do have a reflective strip here. It's hard to see right now, but they give you a full circle of reflectivity, whereas this one here is you've just got the reflector down there. I don't know that one's better than the other. I think both are very visible, but these do stand out in the city, whereas these fat Frank tires don't have that reflective stripe. So a little bit wider, tread again is not an off-road tread on either one of these, uh, but potentially if you're going a little bit more rougher roads, these ones could be a slight advantage, whereas on these ones here on the cities with that extra reflector, slight advantage to the city commuter. The next thing I want to show you is the handlebars on the Interceptor here. They are very wide, swept and down, and they come back up. They're very comfortable, and they are adjustable in the sense that you can loosen this right here uh, with uh, two Allen keys, and you can tilt those handlebars down and out towards you. So you do need a tool to adjust that, and that's the only adjustment. That is very typical bicycle stuff. The City Commuter does have a nice little upgrade here. So I'm filming the city commuter from a slightly different angle here, but there is still a similar feel to the wide swept bars. They're a little bit more traditional, but the big benefit is here is you have this ability to, on the pedigo bike, on certain pedigo bikes, to loosen this up. And not only can you tilt like this, whoops, like this, which is what you can do with an Allen key on the interceptor, you can also tilt everything up and back. So you can really create a longer reach, a shorter reach, whatever you want. And this just locks back down into place. And what's nice about that is you can adjust it for different riders, but you can also adjust it on the fly for the type of riding you're doing to change your comfort. So depending on what you wanna do, being able to adjust this and having this little dial here tells you exactly the angle you were on so you can get it right back to where you wanted it. So it is kind of a nice feature to be able to adjust on the fly. Now, if you're never gonna adjust it, maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But for me, what I find is because it's adjustable, you have the ability to change the way your hands grip these bike or grip here and it allows you to have less wrist fatigue in my opinion. Now that's just an opinion. I probably, I'm definitely not a doctor and I could be misleading in there, but I do feel like being able to have that adjustment allows you to do those adjustments and it's a nice little upgrade. One thing I really like about both these bikes is they have a very, very large brake light built in here. Now it's very hard to film with the bright sunshine. I can see it quite well in daylight, but you can see when I put a little shade on here, these are very large and they're just kind of a bit of a design to it style light. So they almost look like automotive lights and they work very well for being very bright and help you be visible. And what's cool is on both these bikes, you can attach an accessory if you want that gives you turn signals through this light. So that's pretty cool. That uh, allows you to, instead of using hand signals, you could use the lights as turn signals. So lighting is included here. We'll also take a look at the front lighting for you. Filming lights in the bright daylight is a very difficult thing to do, but these of course are built in. I don't know if I can change the angle at all to sort of show you on the camera. They are extremely visible and they are a white LED. And what's nice about them on this e-bike is they're not battery powered in the sense that you need double A's thrown in there. They are powered by the bike itself. So you can turn them on or off as you want. And that is another difference. Some uh, bikes, uh, I know there's some Trek bikes in Canada at least, the lights are always on. And then you just sort of stand out as an e-bike. Whereas this one here, you don't have to have them always on they are the same lights they mounted to the steering so they turn with your steering wheel but they're not mounted to the or turn with the handlebars but they're not mounted to the handlebars they are mounted down here on the fork so now let's talk about the e-bike components. Both of these have the battery, of course, here, and the motor is in the back hub. That allows you to have a throttle. We're gonna talk about the throttle in a second, but let's talk about regulations and other things. These are 500 watt motors here in Canada. Now, 500 watt motors is what's required by regulation to have a street legal e-bike. So 500 watts can be a little deceiving because the watts is horsepower. That's really what watts are. So think about it as a 500 watt, that's a, that's a horsepower figure essentially. What's interesting is they are a high torque motor. So the same way as a sports car can have 375 horsepower and uh, you know not a whole lot of torque and a you know huge bus can have 375 horsepower and a whole lot of torque, horsepower numbers don't always tell you about power. And these are high torque motors, which gives you a lot of power. So even though regulations in Canada require everybody to have a 500 watt motor, there could be a significant difference in power between different 500 watt motors. And these ones are very, very good. They have good acceleration. So let's show you how you access that power right now. 
every e-bike, when we talk about e-bike components, they need a controller. And I just realized I'm gonna stand in the shade here. So we're trying to get out of the shot here a little bit. But you can see on the controller here, you've got a power switch, a set switch, a plus and a minus. It's very, very simple. You're gonna turn the power on. Tapping that actually turns your headlight on. So we can tap that and turn our headlights off. We can tap it again, turn our headlights on. The screen is very important, but it's very clear. You need to understand what's going on here. And there's a difference on Pedego e-bikes compared to some other ones. You've got a battery percentage, which is what that 89 is, and a bar of just five bars. Now, if you don't have that percentage number, that matters because as you can see, 89% is still over 80, which means it's there. So if you had 81%, all of those bars are gonna be there. If you have 99%, all those bars are gonna be there. And what matters more is when you get down to 20%. If you have 1%, you've only got one bar. If you've got 19%, you've got a lot more. So having an e-bike with a percentage readout matters. That 89% is what this one has, it is good. This one's set to miles per hour. You can set it to kilometers per hour. Of course, we're in Canada, we would normally set it to kilometers per hour, but I haven't changed that yet. Pedal assist, P-A-S, that's what you want to have uh, your focus on. And that is very simple to adjust. So on this particular bike, you've got a grip shifter here, which is going to allow you to switch your bicycle gearing between eight different gears. And you can see it's got a nice little label here, plus and minus uh, is labeled as well as the gear, the actual number in there. But your pedal assist is really what you're going to use more than gears on this type of e-bike. And that's what you'll find, you know, when you talk to e-bike riders. So pedal assist, zero is exactly that. No power, no pedal assist, no nothing. You just ride it like a regular bicycle. Step into one, and that to me really takes the little bit of weight away of the bicycle. So it feels like a lighter bicycle. Uh, you know, it doesn't give you a ton of power, but as you start pedaling, it's gonna kick in with just a little bit of power. Then you go up to two, to three, to four, and to five. Well, now when you're pedaling in level five, as soon as you start pedaling, you feel that torque. When I said a high tech, remember when I said a high torque motor? Well, now you're really feeling that torque come in. And uh, as soon as you pedal, it's gonna give you a lot of power. So going up hills, going, you know, various things where you want a lot of power, that's where you wanna be. Now, what's interesting is you can go to level six on a Pedego e-bike. Level six is very simply no pedal assist, but the ability to use the throttle. So let's talk about that throttle right now. All right, I've zoomed in really, really close. I'm still in pedal assist number six. When you're in pedal assist number six, remember, as you pedal, there's no assistance, but this little blue light down there tells you that if I was to use this throttle by spinning this section right here, the bike would give me power up to full power by turning it like a motorcycle to full power. Now, as I go down into level five right here, you'll see it's green. That tells you that the pedal or the throttle is active but uh, you know you can use it whenever you want. So I'm gonna go from five, from four, to three, to two, to one, and nothing changes over here. Now what's interesting is I like to ride in a lower pedal assist number. So the lower pedal assist number uh, gives me just a little bit of power, it doesn't make it too overpowering in any way. But when I get to a little hill, instead of having to change the pedal assist number, I can give it a little bit extra throttle, allow the bike to pick up speed as if it's you know level, power level five, and then back down, but it doesn't turn fully off. If I'm in, let's say, pedal assist two, it still gives me that pedal assist number two. So the green light indicates exactly what's going on. Uh, blue is level six. And then when you go to uh, red, that is in pedal assist zero. And that's like I said, it's gonna say, hey, I'm not doing anything here. You can spin this and we're not going anywhere because pedal assist one is just like a regular bicycle. Now I am zoomed in a little close here. I'll try to move this a little uh, closer here. One thing both these bikes have as well, and something to really think about in an e-bike is you have very good brakes. These are hydraulic brakes. They work similar concept to the brakes in your car. And what that means is it's a nice light pull here, very direct, very good feeling um, to get good, powerful brakes. Now, keep in mind, you may think, oh, I'm not worried about brakes, but I don't care who you are. If you're riding an e-bike, you're going to be going faster than you would be without an e-bike. And having very good brakes can handle those speeds, can handle those things. And again, it's a little bit more weighty bike, has a little bit more weight behind it. So having a very light pull of the lever to have very strong brakes really matters. And they're disc brakes as well, front and rear. So before we take one of these bikes for the torture test up the hill, we'll explain that in a second, and we will do that, I wanna say talk about which bike is best for each person. So first of all, seating position is fairly similar on both these bikes. You've got wide seats, they actually share the same seat. Uh, you've got those throwback handlebars. I do like the adjustability of this. Now, if you are buying one e-bike to share between multiple people, I think that adjustable stem here is a really good feature to have. You'll notice neither one of these bikes have suspension, and I'll just jump on the interceptor here and talk about why that doesn't really matter. If I sit back here, 
all of my weight on this bike is straight down. Having no suspension, there's really no pressure at all on your wrists. On the interceptor, your hands are back towards you, so it just really isn't a concern. It's a very easy to ride bike, and again, you don't need a front fork. So you, because of the geometry of the bike, you don't need a front fork. Now on the city commuter, there is a slight difference with the hand position. If I jump on here, it's a little bit more, a little bit more out. So instead of that being straight back, more straight back on the interceptor, the city commuter has a little bit more like this, but again, they are very similar. The idea is that neither one of these bikes is putting any weight on your wrists at all. It's just a decision to how much do I want to reach? How much do I not want to reach when you adjust this stem? The fat frank tires are something that some people are going to like. They can take some of that vibration out although they're not that much fatter than the city commuter tires. If you're riding only in the city, it, you may want that reflective stripe on these, that may depend. But at the end of the day, it comes down to which one do you like the style better of? Which one do you like the feel better of when you sit on the bikes? The powertrain's basically the same, or it is the same, so you can decide which one's best based pretty much on looks, which is pretty rare in the bicycle segment. You know, a lot of them, you know, the looks changes the feel, but these feel very similar. Now, let's take the interceptor and go do the torture test. All right, before we do the torture test, let's talk about a couple things that really matter. First of all, this is a very steep hill. When you film it, it doesn't look like a steep hill. The other thing is, although electric motors have full torque at zero RPM, essentially, it is always best to give a little bit of speed to it, uh, to allow it, a little bit of pedaling, to allow it to take off a little bit. So. It's going to seem like this is gonna struggle, but a lot of bikes won't even move off the line. So we'll talk about how we're doing. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm filming with a wide angle camera, which is gonna skew me on the outskirts. Up and down, it kind of speeds up, slows down. It just looks kind of weird, and I look kind of weird. Step through design is really nice, especially on hills. You're not lifting your leg way over here. And if you've got cargo back here, the step through design is really nice as well, because you don't have to lift your leg over your cargo. So what we're gonna do is, I don't even know what gear I'm in. Oh, I'm in a lower gear, so that'll be nice to get moving. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in pedal assist number five. So I would have full power if I pedaled, but I'm just going to use the throttle. Now this is exactly a torture test. Most e-bikes won't move at all. Um, if I let this bike go right now, it disappears behind me very quickly. So let's see what we can do. I'm just gonna move my pedal just a hair to get balanced and I'm gonna go full throttle only. So there we go, oops, full throttle only. I shifted gears by accident easily pulls me up. I'm moving actually pretty quick. We're gonna come back down. Now here's the thing with the braking. Two fingers on the brake. In fact, I'll brake with just my pinkies. Stop, no problem. Let's do the same thing. Brake with just my pinkies and stopping, no problem. So let me do that again. Throttle only, because it was a little bit jerky. These torture tests, again, they don't film well, but when you see it in person, you start to realize, wow, if you want a bike that goes up a hill, no problem. There we go. So just balancing, no pedaling. Easily going, I am going, whoa, three, five. Okay, whoa, over six miles an hour at the top of the uh, hill here. And then again, ripping down here, no problems. Doesn't matter if I go a little bit fast because I've got really good brakes to control it. Now, instead of using the throttle, I'm gonna just use the throttle to get me going and then pedal, which is another way to torture test. So again, I'm in a lower-ish gear. So because I'm in on an e-bike, I don't have to really stress. I can have some assistance right from the beginning. So full throttle and then I pedal. Well, now I'm ripping up. And as I go past the sign, I stop pedaling. Oh, I don't even know. I was over 10 miles an hour easily. I'm not a super strong person, but it just makes going up hills so easy on an e-bike. Both these bikes are gonna handle that equally well. And here's the thing. If you want one of these bikes, if you wanna try one out for yourself, Swing down to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. This is a great bike to buy as a Christmas gift, even though it's the fall and the winter's coming. You can really enjoy it as soon as spring hits. There's a full lineup of bikes here, so swing down if you're in Fredericton, New Brunswick, to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. Try these out for yourself. You can try them out. You can try them on the torture test hill here if you want. And of course, if you want to know more, subscribe to my channel. We're going to go through these bikes in detail in the future, and I'll keep coming back to them to make sure you get all the questions answered that you want. Thanks everybody for watching.